Hey everyone, Phoenix 8.0 is now out and prompts have been launched. With that comes a ton of really cool new features for helping you version, reuse, and iterate on your prompts all very seamlessly within Phoenix and also in your code. I'm going to walk you through some of these features today. We'll work through a use case and you can see how you can use these tools in your own applications. So I have this data set here and as you can see, it takes one input and there's one output. These inputs are reviews for some sort of product and the output classifies them as negative, positive, or neutral. So you can imagine that maybe I work at this company, I wanna build this tool that's gonna to classify my reviews for me, and I can use Phoenix and these prompts features to do that. So if I navigate to the left-hand side toolbar, I now see this new option called prompts. So I'm gonna click into that, and it's gonna take me to this prompts hub. As you can see, I've been playing around with some stuff, but for this case, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create prompt, and that brings us to our prompt playground. So what can we do now? I'm going to start with a very basic prompt. And all this says is I'm an evaluator that's assessing the sentiment of a review and it's supposed to output only one word, positive, negative, or neutral. Because this is a classification problem, I probably want to you know, play around with some of these parameters. I can adjust the model if I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bump down temperature and you know, have that in there. I can specify response formats or tools. Um, I'm going to leave that blank for now, but I'm going to go ahead and hit save, call this reviews, and for my prompt description, and if I hit create prompt, what that does, it tells us that our prompt was successfully made. If we navigate back to the prompts tab, it's now over here, and what we can see is our prompt saved, but it's not just the message that's saved here. It's also all these model configurations. As you can see, I changed temperature, that's updated here. If I had tools and response formats, that would go right here as well. If we save our prompt as more than just text and think of it more as an entity, we can recreate the indication of an LLM using these parameters. So now let's say I've saved this prompt, I've tested it against that data set, and I wasn't happy at all with the output. I wanna iterate on this prompt and improve it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit in playground. That brings me back to my playground, and we can see that original prompt that we were working with. This time, I'm going to go ahead and add in a tool. So if I hit add tool, I'm going to say that it's required. I really want the LLM to use this. I'm going to paste in this tool here that I have called classify text. All it's doing is classifying the text as we've been doing. And I'm going to specify that this system prompt should be using this tool. So now if I go ahead and save that, I am still under the prompts, prompt reviews that I've been working with. And for my change description, I'm just gonna say I added a tool. I'm gonna go ahead and update my prompt as I can see that that was successful. If I navigate back to prompts in my reviews, I now have two versions. So my original version and then this version that I just added in. And if we look at what's been saved for this prompt, I can now see that classify text as a tool is also saved in. So if I wanna go back and you know use this, all of my information is in one place. What's really great about versioning now is that, you know, as I continue to edit in Playground, make changes, save it, this linear version history is created for my prompt. Another really cool feature here is cloning. So if I go ahead and hit this clone button, I'm gonna go with the default name and I hit clone. If I jump back to my prompts tab, I now see an exact clone of the prompts and the version history that I had just created. A huge benefit of this now is if I go back to my prompt Playground and let's say I wanna you know, change this and use Anthropic instead. Maybe I want to mess around with this even more, but I don't want to disrupt my original version history. I can do that in this clone prompt. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to write change model, update my prompt. Let's say I've tested that, save it, come back to my clone prompts. And in my version history, in my clone, you can see this updated version with now my um, model changed. But if I go back to my original prompt, this has remained untouched. So up until this point, you've kind of seen how to, you know, change, iterate, version your prompts all in Phoenix, but you can also do the same thing in your application in code. So if we scroll down here, we can see that, you know, you have your prompt up here, but it's also written out in code for you and Phoenix does that for you. And using Python or TypeScript clients, I'm showing you the TypeScript version right now, you can copy and paste this code here using the Phoenix client jump into your code and just start to get and modify prompts right there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use the Python version. So I'm going to switch to Python, copy and paste this, 
jump over to my notebook. And if I put that in, we can see that if I check out the prompt ID, it's going to match up with what I saw in Phoenix. So now we've just pulled this prompt from Phoenix into our code. One way of doing this was with the version ID, as like Phoenix gave you as a default, but we can also do prompt identifier. Our name is reviews. And if I run that, check out the prompt ID, that's also going to match. So this is two ways of pulling your prompts from Phoenix. Say you're someone that maybe doesn't like to mess with the code, but you want to version on your prompts in Phoenix, but somehow indicate to your application that, you know, this is the current version that I want to be using. That's where tags come in. So let's work with this most recent version. I'm going to go ahead and hit tag. This is the one I want to do for production. You see this production tag come up. And now if I jump back to my notebook, I can now add this tag field. And let's do production. That's what we tagged it by. Run that. And we can see that, you know, Phoenix has pulled that prompt tagged for production into our code. If I hadn't included this tag and I just did the prompt identifier, it's going to pull in the most recent version that we had. Um, one thing to note here is that when you're using uh, Phoenix to pull prompts and that's part of your application, it's probably worth caching your prompts at that point. If there's any network issues, um, you still want to make sure that your application is up and running, even if it's unable to connect to Phoenix for some reason. So everything up until this point that I've showed you in Phoenix about you know creating and iterating on your prompt, let's say, let's see how we can also do that in our code. So I'm going to copy and paste this code snippet in here, and let's talk through what this is doing. So first, I'm going to import this library from OpenAI. That's going to help us format our parameters for this prompt, because OpenAI is what we're using here. I'm going to import prompt version from the Phoenix client, and my updated prompt here is going to use a technique called few shot prompting. The idea here is that if I sample five random data points, if I put that into my uh, prompt template, hopefully that's going to help the model model classify reviews better by you know taking a look at some examples before it makes a decision. Um, so next, I use params here, and I use that OpenAI uh, library that I imported to you know, get all my parameters in the right place. As you can see, like I have temperature set, a model set, and my messages. Um, and finally, I use the Phoenix client prompts.create function to actually create my prompt. So if I go ahead and run that, and I jump back to Phoenix, I now see a third version of my prompt created. We can see the five random examples that it pulled in in the system prompt here, as well as all the model con configurations. I can also see you know, how this is written in code in Python, TypeScript, if I wanted to do that instead. Um, let's go ahead and tag this version for production now. Let's say I've tested it. I'm happy with it. We can see that the production tag switched from you know, the second prompt version to our most recent one now, because we can only have you know, one type of production tag on one version when we pull by that. So let's see what that looks like copy and paste that in. All this is doing is pulling that same prompt that I just created from Phoenix. You don't need to necessarily do this because we created it here, but I'm just going to show you that it works. And if I check out the prompt ID, those are going to match up. Another really cool feature here is provider conversion. If you remember earlier, we cloned a prompt, we changed the model to Anthropic, and then we saved that all in prompt playground in Phoenix. But we can also do that right here in code, and I'm going to walk you through that. So I've copied and pasted this code snippet in here. The first thing I'm doing is importing Anthropic, specifying my model. I'm using this few shot prompt that we just created. And I'm going to use this format function, pass in an example, and specify Anthropic. If I you know, format my response and run that, I can see that it outputs neutral. And what Phoenix is doing here is that it's converting it to Anthropic without me having to go through all this work up here to do that, which is really great and really convenient for me. If I take a look at what formatted prompt actually looks like, I can see that it's outputting something that's of type anthropic prompt. It's saving my message that I specified, as well as all my model parameters right here, which is really cool. With all these tools I've been showing you, you don't need to use specific frameworks. You don't need to step into Phoenix if you don't want to. It all depends on who you are and what kind of tools you prefer to use. Maybe you like to work in Phoenix directly. You don't want to touch the code. You can iterate on your prompts there, tag them in a certain way so your application knows which versions to use. Maybe you don't want to touch Phoenix and you want to do all of this in code itself. You can create prompts, iterate on them here, and also pull from Phoenix if you'd like. As a final step here, I'm going to go ahead and run an evaluation, and let's see what that does to our data. What this is doing is it's you know taking our few shot prompt template, formatting it a certain way. I'm going to run an evaluator on this, let that run. So that took a moment to run, but if I jump back to Phoenix now, I can see that there was an 80% success rate there with my few shot prompt. I can either you know decide that I'm happy with that, iterate more using all these tools that we've just talked about for you know versioning, creating, pulling prompts, either in the UI or in Phoenix here itself. Um, we're really excited about these new features and we're excited to see what you do with them. Thanks. <laughs>